the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Merry Christmas. In this season of Christmas, we're still in the season, it's not just one day, as you know, <laughs> we are celebrating the arrival of Emmanuel, which means God with us, God with us in the form of a person. God's love is incarnate, literally, God is in the flesh. The word became flesh and lived among us. Those words are so familiar to us, I think it's easy to gloss over how profound they are. The one who was with God at creation, the Word, the Christ, is who, who is one with God forever, became a human baby. God came into the world the same way that you and I did. And at Christmas, God is here. He's immediate. He's real. Like most people, I grew up thinking about God as up there somewhere. You know, God's in his heaven and all's right with the world. Well, you know, sometimes I wondered if God is way up there and we're down here, then how does all become right? The good news is that God is not up there in some faraway place. Jesus came into the world, this world, the world where you live. Spiritual writer Madeline Langle tells about a time when a violent thunderstorm woke her young daughter who cried out terrified. And Langle tried to comfort her, saying, don't worry, dear, God is always with you. And the child said, I know that, Mommy, but I want someone with some skin on. <laughs> so at Christmas, God became someone with some skin on. Not just God in a man's suit like a costume or something, God became a real person. And you'd think that would convince people that God loves them, loves us, and will go to any length to reach us. Our scripture says that our world came into being through Christ. Yet when Christ came into the world, the world did not know him and his own people did not accept him. So, like most things in life, the bad news often sits right next to the good news. The good news being that God gave the world a gift to bridge the gulf between heaven and earth so that nothing would ever be able to separate us from God, not even ourselves. The bad news is that the world did not recognize Jesus as a gift from God. Christ is still our gift at Christmas, and still recognizing him and receiving him can sometimes be a stretch for us. Can we fully receive the gift of Christ? Well, let's think about the nature of gifts, and maybe you want to think about the gifts you received this Christmas. What was your very favorite gift? Think about that gift. It's probably the one that reflects the loving attention of the giver. Perhaps it's a precious thing, something beautiful, chosen just to delight you. The giver knew that you would like it, so he or she wanted you to have it. The gift doesn't have to be of great material value, so long as it holds meaning for you and for the giver. A gift like that says, I see you. I'm really thinking about you. Look how much I love you. 
When you receive a gift reflecting that depth of thought and attention, don't you feel cherished? You love the gift, whatever it is, because you have received the message of love that it brings. And that's the kind of gift that God gave to the world when the word was made flesh. God's message was and is, I see you, I know you, look how much I love you. I am giving you this perfect gift. It's exactly what you need. Have you ever given a gift to a child only to find out that she's more fascinated by the wrapping and the ribbon than what's inside the package? <laughs> we have some young grandchildren and we see that. Sometimes a young child will, will carry a brightly wrapped package around the house, not even wanting to open it. She'll protest when her parent tries to show her how to tear off the wrapping and see what's inside. The outside is what dazzles her. She thinks she already has what she wants. And I think that's how we might seem to God sometimes. We carry around God's unwrapped gift of love, clutching it stubbornly. We think we already know all we need to know about God's gift of love, so we needn't look deeper. And that means that we can stay at a superficial level with Christ. We feel so warm and um, uplifted in the shimmer of Christmas Eve. Maybe we wonder if the gift inside Christmas will be as lovely as the promise of that sparkling, magical package of Christmas Eve. It's not that the wrapping on the outside of our Christmas celebration isn't meant to please. It is, the dinners and the decorations and the music, but really it's the gift inside Christmas that lasts. And the gift inside Christmas is the still, small voice of God's love speaking always. The gift is whatever brings you into the presence of Christ. And sometimes that's less than dazzling. It could be a profound encounter with a very unremarkable person or a sense of gratitude in the midst of a less than glamorous activity like spending time with someone who has no way to thank you or pay you back for your time and care, or serving a, cari a homeless Caritas guest. That can be the profound encounter that brings you in the pres into the presence of Christ. Perhaps it's that sense of peace when you put everything that sparkles aside and simply rest in God. Alas, there are some gifts that children and adults dismiss quickly. Maybe it's the wrong size or it just doesn't suit your taste. Something about it isn't quite right. I wonder if any of you have things that you will return or put aside for re-gifting. <laughs> Maybe there's someone else whose life that gift will fit, but it doesn't fit your life. And that's what happened with God's gift. The world turned up its collective nose at Jesus. Nice thought, God, but not quite for us. We know what our Savior is supposed to look like, and he does not look like that baby. The Messiah is supposed to be strong and regal, commanding respect. How can the Savior be a weak, helpless infant with no power? And even grown, he's not quite what we want. The things he asks us to do are too hard, too dangerous, 
and sometimes they're simply unfair. Just like that night in Bethlehem, our Christian life is a lot messier than we might wish. Our spiritual lives are seldom what we expect or what we ask for. The Christian reality of loving God and our neighbor might not fit who we are, who we think our life should be. Living in a, living in a way that respects the dignity of every human being, well, that might require just too much of us, or we might not know quite how to do that. So, as we all move through Christmas into the new year, try to look for whatever helps you receive God's greatest gift. What resolution could you make that will help you open your spirit to God's presence, to Christ's presence in your everyday life? Take Jesus out of the fancy, sparkling wrapping of Christmas and let him walk plainly into your life. Look at Jesus, because that is what God is like. To all who received him, he gave power to become children of God. So children of God, let us receive our gift so that he may dwell in us and we in him. Amen.